can you see the title screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, awesome. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I would like to talk today about the retrospectives, my favorites. Actually, maybe, yeah, let's let's go with the number flow. Uh, about retrospectives, I would say the most important and interesting for me uh, ceremony from the all variety of Scrum ceremonies. I will try to guide you through the five stages of a proper retrospective and uh, show you what are the traps and pitfalls that you can uh, fall into. So, um, so your uh, retrospective will be uh, pleasable and uh, successful. I'm a project manager. I'm uh, with IT for more than for more than, uh, I don't know, almost 17 years now in professional life doing FinTech, doing um, loyalty solutions, fast moving consumer goods solutions. And at the moment, I'm very happy to be a Scrum Master with a gambling and bookmaking project, which is a very refreshing thing uh, if you're constantly working with banking solutions, but there are a lot of similarities, so that's funny. Uh, on this, meeting i'll try to the, this is the agenda first we'll have a short introduction what the retrospective is what in general then we'll show you the steps then i'll sh uh, i will jump on through the uh, through the do's and don'ts the traps i mentioned and and earlier i'll be showing some uh, simple copy paste techniques that we can use i'll be also sharing with you simple questions that uh, can uh, speed up the, the whole process because you know dealing with people is all about having proper questions and proper tricks to open them so they can uh, speak and uh, and that's the idea. I hope this presentation will be a dialogue. It's just me sp constantly speaking, so feel free to to jump in and to show your experience. Uh, please feel to challenge me. Uh, because uh, what, I, what I said, this is the retrospective is all about hearing people. If uh, people are from various cultures, uh, people are various types, and the um, and I'm and I can assure you, and I'm, I'm I know that that I can do retrospectives through all my life, and it's never perfect. So I'm very happy to. Uh, to know your experience in that domain. And also a very interesting thing, this, this presentation was made before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, the, the retrospective made online was, uh, let's say, not so popular then, but now it's a must. Everything is online, everything is uh, uh, made from home office and I would really appreciate your, uh, your um, thoughts and your best practice is how you do it. Okay, let's jump in to that, to the story. So what's a, ret uh, what's a retrospective? So do we need it? So is that true? It does, everybody does it? No? Um, no, so okay, so everybody does it and we even don't know that that's maybe it's happening because it's so obvious. It's not only in IT, but in all domains, in all locations. And um, a good example would be uh, almost everybody does it once a year on New Year's. And so I think even animals do it while trainings. They look, so this is a natural thing, but the technique that allows us to improve ourselves. So what, what, what's retrospective? It's a thing that allows us to uh, to understand what we did right in a proper, uh, in a defined, in a defined uh, period of time. So to understand the retrospective ceremony and its goal is to understand, it's important to understand how we learn. So if we learn from our mistakes, so we need to have, and we need to investigate and we need to define a portion of time where we to look for that mistakes. Or maybe let's not call it mistakes. Maybe let's call it just facts. So we have a period of time and we gather information about that time, what happened. We need to define it with those actions, those facts were good for us or not. And uh, 
and we need to cut categorize them to show uh, which facts are better and put more action on those and which actions which facts were bad and uh, try to avoid it simple simple thing but uh, if we like to learn individually it's it's very simple but the more complex the team is actually even two people everyone has a different understanding of what's what's good and wrong everybody has their own perspective and the point of view changes so even the same fact from a different angle means something different and you need you need the context that's why it's important that the retro uh, ceremony and this process of uh, team learning is is clear and let's call it emotion free emotions make us human and i'll be pointing that several times in that presentation that emotions are good and that there's no bad emotions because they guide us and we can look in that direction that if there are emotions it means that this thing is important for that particular person who has those emotions but uh, we need to have some frames that allow us to uh, to deal with the emotions in a uh, in a peaceful way so okay uh, to do the basic retro ceremony uh, ceremony and to do it correctly to learn as it always have to uh, there are some principles so we need to have in mind that we need to understand different points of view so be open uh, we need to follow uh, the order of uh, of thinking. And so it's, it's organized one step after another. We need to, we can't, uh, we can't, we shouldn't, I would say we can't, but of course it's agile, everything is possible. I wouldn't recommend skipping a step, a phase or jumping over saying it's not important. I'll try to convince you that each of the five phases in retrospective is important and why. It's important to uh, make sure that the uh, holistic perspective, high level perspective for this time period, for the problem that we're tackling is, is met. And uh, we need to make sure that, uh, uh, that the discussion is, is on topic and it will go as far as it needs to. You're just to, let's say the discussion is like a river, don't stop it. Just make sure it's in the banks and it's going somewhere. You can't stop it because it's not the point of, that's not your role here. It's about people investigating and finding the, the solution by themselves. And uh, I would say the most important one, I wouldn't say that the previous one were not, but if we had a nice talk and we didn't make any actions and those actions weren't accountable, we didn't assign person accountable for that action, nothing will change. And this is actually the retro killer. And uh, I am sure you, a lot of things, they're not new for you. And you're saying, I've heard that several times already, but uh, let's be frank, not everybody is, uh, is constantly looking and, uh, and making sure that those simple principles are met every time. And this is the, the, cons the consistency and the repetition of those good practices make the retro better and better every time. Okay, let's jump in to the details. Uh, five steps uh, mentioned over here. But first, before we do anything, uh, preparation and like with everything it's good to prepare yourself for that right so uh, below uh, I'm, I've, I've listed I'll mention now the things that uh, that should be prepared um, before the, the ceremony is, is done so the basics are of course goal duration attendees room and setup because people need to know why they're here and what for, who is coming there. And this is not only that they should know that, but you should know the context of the people that you invite in the room. You should know the history and the environment. You should know if this is a long 
is the is this uh, team uh, with the history of long cooperation together or this is like or maybe the manager just changed and uh, knowing that will give you uh, actually you can imagine whether the conversation will be less or more formal will, will it be frank or not okay team specifics uh, the maybe the recent challenges they had maybe there were some layoffs people were fired or somebody was fired or recently hired or maybe promoted so that's the thing um should know about the the leader and the the unofficial leader because that also makes uh you should understand those uh, those two figures because they change the dynamic and sometimes you need to shish the uh, the leader so he wants over uh, he wants um, over talk everybody and he sometimes he just needs to listen and not shout out the harassment people are also uh, challenging so that's the thing you should understand the um, expectations of the team and the relation between the team and stakeholders maybe there's, the, maybe there's some pressure that's maybe there's some unofficial goals so a lot of and before uh, having the, the retrospective like when i'm invited to lead retrospective for other teams it's important to make as much uh, research possible have a coffee or even seven uh, with several people and discuss the uh, the things that are going on because it's if you know the uh, the matter that you will be dealing with is always uh, it's always easier and, and uh, there will be uh, less traps. Okay, so one of the things that was worth mentioning is maybe working environment, working schedule, um, the morale of the team, what else could be done. And the, the team's working, uh, the office space, that's also important because people may feel uncomfortable in some places or more comfortable. Of course, I'm mean, referring here. Sometimes you can make a retrospective outside of the company on green grass. I had that. It's it's changing everything, and the, the I would say the idea of retrospective is is to make people comfortable with sharing their uh, their their feelings and and suggestions. Okay, uh, what else? Another thing is important. So we know that the office supplies and we've got the history and the environment. Another thing is to know that people understand what's what actually retrospective is. Not everybody, uh, not everybody is in a, lives in this, knows Agile, knows Scrum, knows IT. So uh, before you invite somebody, make sure that uh, this person is aware uh, what kind of discussion will be there. Introduce them to, to this kind of uh, open culture and sharing it and, uh, and ensure that uh, this is a safe environment. It's really important to emphasize that. Okay, then uh, People should, before the, the meeting, should know how do we communicate and what are the agreements. Uh, if it's offline, uh, communication is incredibly important. If it's online, it's um, all the supplies, office supplies should be there and the rules that uh, we should encourage and make the moment the invite arrives uh, clear that this is a safe and trustworthy environment. So those are the things that you should uh, do before uh, the retro itself. I would say uh, that in times of offline retrospectives, the, uh, the only change that's happening is you need to make a lot of more preparations upfront than in, in normal retros there is. But um, as I said, the, the COVID-19 situation will be um in more detail later on okay let's go the first stage as you can see it's just a 
it's it's the opening so it's not taking long like the closure but it's important to say uh to make sure and i and you know that they know because you've sent the the goal of the meeting uh in the invite but people don't read invites and then if you don't make it clear at the moment it's it's the idea is it's faster to say it one more time repeat it one more time here than to answer uh, questions and make the clarification if somebody misunderstood it somehow and uh, they could then uh, and to refer that so it, that that's it's just uh, a time saver saver okay so first the purpose then we um, i would refer to uh, to oh, let's go in a circle for the persons why we meet here then appreciation thank you it's very nice people like that if you thank you for their time especially if we've got an external guest or this is a big event so uh, I make the appreciation for their effort and then let's uh, let's try to make common ground and with common values showing that we all uh, we all would like uh, to our company to be more successful and our team to deliver more and uh, work in better standards quality or, or just comfort and i would refer to to those actually uh, common values that we all have and then um then there are the agreements and participation and the participation is what i'm saying agreements in participation because it's at the beginning you need to define why and how we'll be working on like we don't have mobile phones we don't have uh, it's that that's the contract and we all know that from the meetings but what i would emphasize here is that agreement and participation is here that without we need to emphasize that everybody who is in this room is here for some reason and uh, the reason is he is willing to participate in in the process of learning and that we all find a common solution for some problems and that's the agreement and participation that's participation that this person need to know that they must uh, must uh, speak which is very hard sometimes um Okay, one well, thing maybe about the purpose. Normally, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, to be in or lead a retrospectives that are dedicated for one goal. Uh, normally, I had. I was. Let's say it's a um, the sprint is over. Let's have a retro to investigate what was good, what was bad, and so on. Uh, what I really like to do is make a retro dedicated to solve one particular problem like we had a retrospective because we had a conflict with a solution architect or there's a, there was a switch in the uh, with the technical leader changed and there were some concerns and the, the retrospective was only for that one subject so it's important in the purpose section to define what's uh, what's in and what's out of scope okay uh, what i would say it's important at this stage i uh, would encourage you that each of the participants uh, speaks at least something um, because uh, i i read the statistic that if you um, if you i don't want to say force but if your participant speaks in the first five minutes, there is a high chance, or a much higher chance, that uh, they will speak along in later on in the meeting. It's just get uh, to warm them up, and you can work them up with um, with uh, with tricky questions, maybe like. Uh, what was one thing in your mind when you thought uh, what was uh, one thing that, that was, was in your mind when you are entering the ceremony or you were imagining the ceremony or uh, if you it need to be related with with the ceremony itself because it's not small talk because small talk is different but it's about like 
assuring them that this is the time that we will be talking business. Yeah? So uh, coming to the, uh, to the um, retrospective, if you were a car, animal, or a film or, or flavor, what would it be? And that way with those, let's say stupid questions, you get more or less the feeling of people who are coming in. Uh, the, the, the more original it is, actually the better because uh, it like pushes people off track. And I find retrospective when you um, push people or say move people f outside of their comfort zone or at least that plant way of thinking, that's a very refreshing perspective and you can find really interesting topics or uh, suggestions in that way. Um, another, um, another way of uh, showing you a different, uh, how to encourage people to look on the subject in different angle is the, um, the ASVP, which comes from explorer, shopper, uh, vacationer and prisoner perspective. We can look at the same, uh, we can look uh, at the same thing, but being an explorer and a person of vacation uh, is a totally different. Right, the person of vacation is just there for a second and doesn't care, for example, on maintenance or regarding code. It's like there to be um, enjoyable and fast, right? Uh, the same is a prisoner who, who has a totally different pers perspective. Like you will be doing this for the whole life. So the, if it's challenged with such a situation, you will uh, you will look at the the solution that you're developing in a totally different way. Maybe the prisoner is an exaggeration, but I wanted to, to, to present you that different, uh, putting yourself in different um, roles, maybe not roles, but uh, situations, however you call it, uh, automatically makes your uh, judgment and perspective, the angle you're looking at different. Okay, so from this slide, I would like you to remember that retrospective is all about exploration and discovery. And the, the better you push people outside of their, um, their known track of uh, how the ceremony looks like, the better results you'll get. We have one question uh, in the yes. chat. Yeah, you can read it yourself or I can read. Yeah, one second, yeah. Could you advise some tips to build safe environment? Okay, so it's what well, the basic thing is like uh, you make an agreement at the beginning, which is whatever we discuss here stays here. That's that's the minimum thing you mm -hmm. can uh, you can encourage. Then you can if you need something, um, then you can make things like. Uh, Around Robin, people say something personal about each other. That also makes, uh, let's say, a circle of trust. The people, if people have trust to, to each other, like also, also icebreaker games, make uh, them feel more friendly. And if people are friendly, they have trust, and that way you can uh, you can. Uh, have more faith that this is a tr uh, safe environment because uh, if people don't want to make it safe they will it's not that i can say no recording or um, inspect them for microphones or you can't make any notes because the, the whole idea is that we all are all at the same uh, uh, we are all here together. The, the, the safe environment comes from that everybody understands why are we here. We are here to help the team grow. And uh, with those silly things, silly questions, you can find out that somebody is willing to cooperate or not. Like every, somebody is, is bossy and I'm not doing this because this is silly. I, this, this is a f clear flag that this person is not willing to cooperate. You can start a discussion. Uh, why are you doing? Explain, of course, those those activities. What's the sense of those? That this is not silly, but this is actually silly, but with a purpose. And um, and that way you can find out the the people who uh, jeopardize the the meeting. More or less, that is. That's uh, that's my uh, idea for it.
I thank hoped you. it's. I hoped I, it's. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's move on. Yeah, let's move to the second phase, and this is, and um, finally we're getting to the meat on the bone. Um, so the second phase is collection of facts. And I will emphasize here, we are looking for facts, not for judgments, uh, no blaming, but everything. We can talk about feelings, we're not here, but it's not about uh, judging or solving or even prioritizing. It's just pure facts. Um, so data and facts create, a, it's, it's about making a, a shared picture of what happened, right? It's like a sharing photograph. We see this, this, and that. So this is important. So uh, it ensures that everybody uh, knows about what we are talking about. Okay. Then to, so I would say uh, the best way to make it work is to either start talking by yourself or making a good example. I say in, uh, in I language, so I recognize that uh, the tests were laid by um, two days or something like that. Or uh, if we want to say about feeling, I feel really bad that, uh, that the, um, I would feel really bad when I was ignored on dailies or whatever. It, it's, it's about what I can control or what I can say. But what we really like to concentrate here is the information in data, data and data is understood by, and I listed everything, events, metrics, features, stories, uh, meetings, decision points, changes, team members, milestones, and so on and so forth. So everything that has is related to a change in in those areas and we can say that this is this this element is uh, concerning me and i see i'll see danger regarding this or i feel really bad about that this is the idea and we can do it in a very uh, many many different ways okay so i made here also a remark about feelings because uh, it's very important because they say about our comfort, but they also uh, define is this problem really urgent or not? If we suddenly see that somebody mentioned in fact and emotions rise and there is a discussion on or the voice about this is totally different than others, you know that you found something that that should be covered. On the retrospectives, uh, we, we shouldn't handle everything, every, we should handle only things that matter. I would say only three things from the top. So if you find something that is emotional, this is the, the jackpot. You found what you're looking for. Okay, let's look through some techniques. Of uh, we have one more question in the chat. Okay. Okay. How often do you use liberating structure in your own practice and which type of liberating structure you use? Liberate structure, what do you mean? Yeah. I mentioned that? Yeah, I think. Uh, Natalia, could you please maybe uh, just a little bit explain your question, your answer, I mean, question. <laughs> tak, czy mogę zadać się pytanie po polsku? Oczywiście. Dzień dobry. Liberate structure to właśnie są takie funkcje, czyli właśnie gdzie na przykład a, cztery osoby rozmawiają, to właśnie przez a, takie a, dialogi się pojawią takie a, rozwiązania a, problemów. To właśnie, nie wiem, to 33 chyba takich a, rozwiązań, to właśnie taka niby gra, a, konwersacja, więc no to są bardzo a, popularne techniki, więc a, już a, właśnie a, a, słyszałam o tym na webinarach właśnie też w Polsce, więc a, myślałam, że to jest bardzo popularne tutaj. Nie, ja nie będę ukrywał, żeby nawet Very zapiszę. interesting, but could we talk okay. in English? 
<laughs> so, so the idea was uh, that the deliberate structure is a uh, let's say framework of 33 questions that can lead easily to uh, to finding a solution. So I, it's for me uh, that I understand it correctly, right? And the idea is, uh, are we using it? And that's uh, my question is no, because I never heard about it. And I will be looking uh, after, and I'll actually investigate just after the, the meeting, what that is all about. OK, OK. Let's move on. But very t many thanks for, for, for that. <laughs> As I said, it's always a pleasure to find something new. Okay. You ask for challenges. That you yeah, challenge. that's why. That's without challenges, there's no, there's no uh, learning, right? Right. Okay. So let's think about where we can gather facts. We would uh, like to do it in a um, organized, simple for somebody, for actually everybody way. So the timeline here is is very, is like the basic thing. It's for starters, we are looking for things that happen in those two weeks. And we just do it with posters. On that day, I recognize something. Or we can say the facts um, of the usage of servers or uh, something crashed um, on that day. And we can further on find that the release was two days earlier or something else. If we, if we order things in a timeline, it makes uh, everything more uh, simple to understand. And we can timeline many things, not only uh, technical things, um, but also feelings, events inside the team or outside the team, finding a correlation with meetings and so on, coding functions, what we can find that some, uh, like in, in stages of our uh, software development life cycles, if we include that, the, the traditional things or the releases or whatever that is, so the timeline can be done on through uh, can be um, can be done through different aspects of of, um, of the company. Like we can put also even our holiday calendar and so on. Everything has uh, everything was done in some portion of time, and putting those like layers gives us uh, a better. It will be very helpful uh, in the future. Okay, triple nickels. nickels. I didn't uh, know it's like it, it has this name, but this is the folded card over here, right? One person writes down the second and folds and the second person uh, writes down further on. It, this is a way to uh, encourage people to think independently. And uh, also this is uh, um, a way to, um, for the shy ones to speak out. Color dots, this is very helpful when uh, to, uh, it speeds up the, the, the discussion. Like you say, everybody needs to figure out only two, two ideas and you have uh, three dots uh, to use. And that way you can easily prioritize, uh, prioritize and figure out what uh, what will be handled. Remember that, uh, and I'll be repeating every three slides, that the retrospective is only to deal with the most important things. You don't need really more than three or four, uh, I will stay with the three, three actions, three issues to discuss. That's, that's good enough. Okay, color dots. Uh, MSG, Matt's at GLAD. Ducky do add keep improve, SCS start continue stop. This is the basic ones, the three swim lines or four swim lines. That's the idea. Okay, next thing are uh, locate strengths and uh, and surveys. Okay, locate strengths is about uh, this is like a, a less original, but it's something worthy to use. The idea is to make an interview. You divide the team into uh, into pairs, and one is uh, interviewing the second one, and uh, to collect the strengths, what was good, and the second person is making deposit what went bad in the same event. 
this is useful when we are having a dedicated retro session for something. And uh, this way it's, uh, everybody has a chance to speak up and uh, it opens people uh, attention on others and other situations. So interview, that's the idea. And uh, surveys, of course, um, if we're working with, uh, with uh, external or large group of, of, of people, really handy. This is the way we collect data, or at least the most, uh, the ones that I would, that I'm using and they're working. Of course, everybody has the, their set of the ones that, uh, every new idea is open. Okay, let's call it that way. So this, those are the ones we've got the, as you can see, we've got the uh, time that's happening and events that are happening the time, different factors could be um, good events or whatever it is, but those layers of, of events that are happening um, appear on, the, on, on some time, right? This, this is obvious, those are the dots that people uh, use to prioritize. Prioritization is later on, but it's uh, it's handy because it's it's the prioritization. It we don't we're not saying that this stage is to prioritize, but if people are able to move the dots over here and would find that it's bugging them, it kind of moves. It defines where we will be looking for. Remember, this is not the time to find solutions. It's about finding areas that need attention. And those are the, the, the dots that we uh, can use here. Okay, and trends. Uh, Any questions? We have, yeah, one question exactly. in the chat uh, from Azad. I think Oops. that Azad can um, explain his situation. Azad, can you please unmute if possible? Yeah. Uh, but the question is, what uh, should you do in situation where someone from the team doesn't want to make improvement anymore? Azad, could you please explain? Yeah. Um, for example, let's imagine the team is performing quite well, uh, and at some point of the project, one of the team members, he just doesn't want to improve anymore. He's so in a retrospective that, uh, my performance is okay, I just don't want, I'm working stable. What can you suggest besides of changing the person or something like this? How can you motivate people to improve? Because um, retrospective is and scrum is, retrospective is all about continuous improvement, even if you do great, for example. Right? Exactly, exactly. That's the whole point, yes. You never... It's, a, it's, it's very exotic for some for me to hear that I don't want to be better. I'm good enough and it's, uh, I don't need any changes at all. So that's, that's, uh, that's uh, like a uh, very self-confident person. Don't exactly. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to change. It's, it's also good. So that's, that's a great challenge for every scrum master. What I would do, I will first, uh, talk with this person and try to invite is it really as, uh, is the team really perfect? Or the person is really, because the person may think that it's this person is perfect, but if you find at least one suggestion or one uh, remark regarding this job, you can see that you can still work. To, uh, there are some areas for improvement. You can, uh, I don't talk with your the person's resource manager. Maybe there are some uh, goals related to uh, to his uh, uh, to his work. And it's not on. It's not to. And the idea is there that there's still still room for improvement. This is the only thing you need to prove. And but the second question I believe is people not always or rarely or it depends on the scrum as I would say, uh, don't find the retrospectives valuable. The, they just come and complain and nothing happens. The second time they come, the same complaints appear. 
They don't know what's going on. The process is not transparent. Why am I here? I'm wasting my time, right? And I think this is the, 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 the problem that this person has, I, I hope, because it's easier, easier to, to challenge, to, to make the process more transparent, to see that there are changes and show the changes on the team than to change a human being. I don't believe that changing human beings is almost possible, but very difficult for sure. Okay, thank you. So that, that that was the first thing to show, to to show this person that it's not godish, and there's still area to to make this person better. That will be my first step. Thanks for the question. Okay, generate insights. Next stage. So the generate insight phase is the stage, the phase when the facts are combined and you can create a holistic study. Last thing were just facts, right? It was a picture, but you can interpret the same picture in a different way. And if you have all the, uh, all the facts combined, you allow people to share their stories, put more on the table, find uh, dependencies between those facts, and build, uh, and, and build uh, a story that is understandable for everybody. That, and to make sure that everybody has the same the same high uh, point of view, and then when if you know it, what's the situation, then we can deal with it. Then we can deal with it together. So and it's important, as you can see, it's twenty thirty percent of the time. And this phase, and this is a trap. Uh, is sometimes missed. Uh, there's assumption we all uh, work in the same team. Uh, everybody saw it. Like everybody, some maybe didn't. Some just read it on on a chat or read an email about it. Everybody may heard about it, but I'm sure that everybody has a different uh, perspective on it. And it's that's why it takes so much time to explain the situation that we are discussing. So everybody is on board and 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 uh, have the same understanding. This is this is dangerous if we don't have all the participants uh, sync up. So that's the that's one thing to remember from from this uh, from this stage. Okay, how we can make our lives easier to make proper insights. Okay, so brainstorming first is then, like I said, discussion is like a river. Just, just keep it on a direction and it will maybe turn, but it will lead somewhere to, to, uh, to a point it needs to be, people need to talk it over. So, so that's a discussion and, and brainstorming. Brainstormings are tricky because you need to be, a, you need to pay attention for the ones that speak more enjoyable and less enjoyable. You need to look for, uh, look after leaders and unofficial leaders, the charismatic ones, and you need to take care for the uh, silent mouse in the corner. Everybody needs to speak, and that's why uh, brainstorming and open in an open traditional form, like speaking form, is is tricky. That's why I, I showed you the, and the the paper form or the dots also give the voice or making cards on the table. Uh, timeline thing it's uh, it's um, it's helping okay force field analysis it's uh, it's uh, simple and kind of straightforward because you've got the initiative and you just define things that are uh, hindering it so restraining disturbing and things that are push this uh, this initiative forward it's a good starter because it's just is it beneficial or, or not okay then five whys, what, where, who, why, uh, who, why, and when. Also sounds simple, but very powerful tool. It's used uh, worldwide by Lufthansa to figure out uh, the disasters. And uh, I believe when I was working there, to, they went to the fourth or fifth uh, question and everything was solved. So that's, uh, it's a very simple and, and, and good, uh, good way to to figure out things. 
and the dependencies. A fish bone um, from the diagram, as you can see, and you put each each bone here has a different dimension. So in context of a 4M, that's method, machines, materials, or manpower, um, for peace, place, procedure, people, policies, and so on, surroundings, uh, suppliers, system skills, uh, you name it, whatever it is. And if you put those, gather those facts into those, uh, into those uh, dimensions, into those let's say, areas, it's easier to pick up things, uh, pick up dependencies and, uh, and it organizes the, the whole ecosystem. Uh, of course, patterns and, and shifts. Of course, but maybe not. It's, uh, it's important to look for patterns and I've got some uh, questions that may be handy in investigating like patterns. So uh, well, that could be, of course, asking, do you see any patterns apart from that? But what happens if the change occurs? Did you see, uh, see any connection between uh, the, the, the main events or release events or what are the dependencies uh, um, after those, uh, those events? When, do shift, uh, when did it shift occur and what happened just before that? Um, is there a pattern and uh, how often the, the, the cycle of it uh, and so on? So you need to find at least one thing that's repeating and after that you're just looking for dependencies if you find dependencies just find um, the point where the dependency the, the shift the change is happening and you've got a lot of material to work on hmm, any questions uh, no okay yeah, so this is, this is the, the fishbone okay so we know everybody's in sync. We know what to do. We know uh, what the program looks like. And this is the time when we finally decide what to do. It's not that we've got a problem, let's find a solution. No, no, no. The solution comes now. Quite, uh, we need to wait for it. Okay, so um, let's go from the top. What are the things that might you might do differently? Those are the encouraging questions. We know we all know how the picture, or I said the fact picture that the situation looks like, and now we need to. Now the team, and it's also important for the uh, for the Scrum master, especially if you've got a lot of experience in in software development or other IT things. It's their work to figure it out, not yours. Uh, why? Because if they don't, it's their solution, so they will be committed to it. And that's, uh, if they're committed to it, there's a high chance they will be actually not only doing it once, but they will be maintaining it. It will be a habit. If you say, you should do it this way, or I would even, in a nice form, I would recommend it doing that way, they won't have this uh, attachment that this is mine, and you will need to, as a Scrum Master, further monitoring the uh, the, the progress of uh, of how this new habit, new change was implemented. Uh, you will need to put much more effort to uh, to remind uh, in reminding them to do that, or uh, it will be much harder to implement it. Okay, so one more time. At this stage, it's, uh, it's defined who does what, by what time, so the result solves the problem like. Like we've got the use case definition, I would say that the, the definition for this stage is who does what, by what date, of uh, so the result solves the problem like. And so everything actually is, is over there. <laughs> Who, because accountable, when, uh, what cure for what disease was made. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the thing. If we know the holistic perspective, we can know, uh, we know which, what's important. We know what's, what we should deal with up first. If there are some things like equally important, it's your call. I wouldn't like bother in, um, 
and discussing whatever is this really more important if if they say that it's equally important somebody needs to make a decision and it's faster if you make it if you make a wrong decision they'll they'll correct you and that's really funny it's, that's but it's it's much faster to 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 be proactive okay another thing is this is uh, i believe this will be the the third time i'm emphasizing it take the only important things take action only the things that matter so don't concentrate on every possible uh, solution because you won't have enough time so uh, let's say take three from the top okay it's important now uh, the the next thing give time to recovery after unsuccessful improvements it's important uh, uh we mentioned earlier that this is a safe environment right and uh, it's about if you made a mistake your experiment or this the, the planned action for retro was unsuccessful right? it was wrong so it's important to uh, to say it loud that uh, we are over that uh, we won't discuss this topic anymore and let's stop kicking ourselves for it and it's it's important to make those kind of remarks even if uh, like the experiment was really bad we can uh, we can skip the retro or even if there were suggestions regarding it we can say we still need time to recover or we still feel really bad after that we don't want to discuss it and those are as i said emotions and if like the majority speaks that we don't want to, we feel really bad at the moment so just remember to define when we'll be tackling it next time and then and just leave it we're all human beings and uh, we shouldn't be so bad on ourselves. Okay, what else? Improvements start from the team. Mm -hmm. That was, I mentioned that they should um, do it themselves. Uh, and improvements should be done immediately. Ah, I'll touch that uh, later on with more detail, but if we define if something was defined we know a solution we know the situation and we know how to handle it we have to make sure that all those uh, seven criteria are met everything that we do everything that and there is an action item we know that somebody uh, is responsible for it that it's clearly stated if we are doing an action write that action it's not it's not uh, the solution won't be is not writing down process for releasing process that's no solution so is it there or not is it needs, does it need a change does it need implementation what's i don't know what release process means it needs to be self obvious every action needs to be described with the verb that's that's the whole idea of action items okay when well, somebody who does the action small steps things uh, you need to if something is really big and challenging and you know, to kill this you know to kill this uh, the, the dragon you need to make first step and the, the smaller it is the the easier it is but uh, i know there's the saying that the uh, the first step is the worst or the journey around the world or to life is first step i don't know something like that but uh, you need to make the first step and it's highly possible that if the first step is easy and simple the second one will be the same and it's better to make two small steps than one large and uh, wait for it to happen for i don't know uh, four times longer time and you'll use this uh, this startup or um, movement motivator that's why it's always better to move slowly than in jumps because we're human beings and we like movement okay due dates movements are necessary for the uh, for the manager the scrum master or the, the product owner who was promised 
to make uh, that the team makes some actions in order to improve but it's also important for the people themselves because they can plan their work and uh, if there is no due date it means that it will be done somewhere some the best answer and it's always correct is uh, yesterday no tomorrow sorry <laughs> tomorrow this is the uh, I'll do it tomorrow. So it's always up to date. It's so close, but it's so unprecise. So uh, remember to have precise dates. Smart, we know. Simple, measurable. We all know that's a crime. And that's also tricky because this, uh, we all heard about it, but it's it's really hard to make those uh, those tasks really smart, measurable. Like, what we need to try, and it's uh, when I'm saying it, so being so skeptic about this smart thing, I know it's important. Every project manager will say that this is, it makes your life really easy if everything is smart and simple and uh, measurable and so on. But uh, finding metrics is, uh, Finding all those information is it's like killing the, the the meeting and you don't want to do it. You need to find a moment when it's good enough. We need to find measurements or steps or milestones that like ensure that you'll be pushing forward. So that's the don't be really um, too too bureaucratic, just put what you need. It would be perfect to have everything there, but remember there are some there are musts, some musts and and uh, could you know like Moscow. What means done? No, of course, definition of done. Everybody understands it in a different way, so define that. And uh, don't close the criteria. Don't close the task if it's not done. Almost done. It's not done. The, the, the everyone now under I believe uh, in IT knows that almost done like can stay in the backlog and being almost done for forever. So don't fall into that trap. It's uh, it's generic and it fits for actually for every every work. When it's done, it's done, and remember that. Okay, closure. Everybody is tired now. Um, hope not, well, not my talk, but at the retro for sure. And uh, this closure gives you an extra boost of energy. And you don't need it actually to improve the, uh, the, the team. It's about improving. You need this boost of energy at the end to improve the process. You say, oh, we are almost done, uh, five minutes left, so maybe let's have some, uh, some small activity like that and so on. So that will, uh, that will uh, give you valuable feedback and to get the team know you better, you know the team and uh, verify what's working or not. So next time you'll be there and you'll be doing your work better. So what I would like to recommend, so the simple retrospective or the retrospective, simple thing, what you liked, what you didn't, how are you feeling? Smile server, two faces. Um, this is the time when you would like to say special thanks for. You can make um, a survey in a way that complains or on post hits, recommendation. And that's, uh, that's a good way because uh, it's anonymous and people sometimes people don't like to say bad things, especially if it was a nice meeting, but on post-its it's much better. And especially when you emphasize that without, uh, without uh, constructive feedback, you'll never do your work better because it's, it's all about constructive feedback. And at the end, this is the return of time invested. And it's, uh, do you think that this time we had here is wasted? And this would be really helpful for that person who uh, is not willing to, to change and improve. And I believe this person will say that this is a total waste of time. And then uh, you can 
uh, if it's clearly said, you know what's what are the next steps. So either you'll be discussing the the agile framework with this person, or uh, maybe it's really maybe this person should be a mentor and teach other how to be a perfect person. Proficiency. Okay. So those are the closure activities. Now let's go to the other ones that I mentioned uh, earlier. The do's and don'ts. What should be done and what shouldn't. What we should avoid of. Do you have any questions so far? No. Nope. Maybe nope. maybe we can open monitor, um, open mic for everybody. Yeah, let's no do. Comments. How many people we've got here? Uh, now we have 14. 14 people that 14 people here with us. So if there is anything you would like to mention, just shout out. Okay. I would. Um, we're halfway for you to know, almost. Okay. That's the thing. If you would like to know what's the idea of a facilitator in retrospective, it's just making sure that uh, the, to make things simple, it's make sure that people talk, uh, don't kill each other, and come out, uh, come of a talk because the actions they can be figured out in a different way. But if they talk, they communicate, and that's the, that's the most important uh, thing there is, that there is a space where you can, you can, uh, we can speak and not be afraid of being shouted or so on. So this is the, the idea of, of the simplest retrospective ever. Put them into the room and make them feel safe and, and observe. Okay, agreements. It's important to have, everybody knows it, but uh, once in a while you, um, you always see somebody is coming with a monitor, with a laptop and doing some work. And uh, it's changes if you're consistent with showing that this is not what we agreed on. The, uh, the, the, the good idea is actually the, the, the thing that's happening with the team that they start to look after each other. You won't need to, uh, at the second time, uh, when, we, when you made the, the remark, the, the no working here, this is a retrospective, and if you need really to work or take the phone, do it outside. Uh, at the third time, the team itself will react, and, uh, and then you know that you're going in the proper direction, that the team feels uh, safe with those rules and uh, that you're doing a right job. Okay, everyone participates. I mentioned dominators, managers, and um, but what happened, and sometimes there is such a situation that the client is willing to participate in the retrospective. And this is like a the retro disaster. Especially this, this client is, uh, is absent on my majority of meetings. People didn't have a chance to speak freely, never with him, and now they want to be in a retrospective. So it's it's important for the facilitator to handle the situation. A client is, of course, uh, he's paying the bills, and sometimes he is uh, he is uh, he will be on the retrospective. But it's important then to explain at the beginning whenever there is that uh, what things can be handled here or not. And not everything can be in such situations when we know that somebody is outside of the trust zone or people don't feel confident, not every topic can be discussed. Okay. Uh, you are only the facilitator. I'm taking from the perspective of the one who's leading the, uh, the the retrospective ceremony, I am just leading it. I'm not there. If you want to have a voice, you need to say and make it uh, make it official and loud and clear. I am not a facilitator. I am now, uh, I am now Lukas Schult, the developer, uh, and I would like to participate with you in the uh, in this discussion. But it's uh, if you are willing to stay long in a discussion, it's better for you to take an external facilitator. Okay, uh, kiss them and then kiss you back. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't use too sophisticated words, uh, especially like if you're not using it uh, on this is not your mother tongue. So uh, really, it's it's important that everybody. It's not a poetry. 
uh, it's not poetry and this is not a Nobel Prize for it. We're just here to talk things over its business. Noise will guide you. This is noise, it's emotions. Like you are going through post-its and some, in, in some, it's, it's normally, it's, it's quiet and uh, when you're going through uh, some particular post-its, uh, there's, there's movement. And you need to be aware that it's happening and that's the guide, that's a flag for you to actually even ask. So make a remark and it's, it's just a fact. I noted that there was movement when I was reading this, uh, this card. Is there something that we would, is, shall we discuss it further on? Is everything on it clear? And, and if they don't want to, they won't be discussing it, but, and, and you can't, and you shouldn't be pushing for it. You may investigate why it's happening, but if they don't want to talk it, about it now, just leave it. But if you just gave them a chance to talk about it freely. Okay, and there are no bad, uh, stupid uh, questions or remarks. If somebody is pointing something, it means it's important for them and we value that. So no judging, no laughing and so on. Why? Because we are emotional and this is also important to make like the improvements, it's, it's, uh, I saw many retrospectives that were almost like roasting somebody. The person had a really bad situation in life. And uh, of course that had a big impact on the, on the work of the person and team members didn't know that and they totally roasted it and it's, uh, it ended up with, with tears, with anger, and so on. And the important thing is, if you know the context, it's, it's simpler for you to understand, but it's, uh, it's actually not your thing to explain. If the person is willing to, to tell the private uh, things from their life, they will, but it's not your call to, uh, to explain them. But if emotions appear, we should all accept it. Like tears, shouting, like tears, give them time. Shouting, say that we, uh, we don't agree anger or violence in any form. So uh, if people walk out, clown. So just uh, name it, it's important. To name it and define whether you, I'll uh, handle this question, just allow me to, to finish this part. Uh, uh, name the behavior, say what you think about it, and then uh, to make it totally clear with the, with the team, what shall we do with it? That may be the, the, the simplest way of, of, of dealing with it. Let's see the question. Okay, I need some help here. Hmm, no questions, but someone writing, thank you. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, those are the emotions. And of course, you are also a human being. People may shout at you. It's work, keep calm, carry on. It will only last for some time. If it's really bad, just... Uh, just, just just make a break, right? You're the leader of this this meeting. If you want to become, everybody will feel it, and uh, this emotion, the bad emotions, will spread. Okay. About changes, so and making things permanent. If we figured out that, uh, I don't mind. If there's a so solution and then we found something out, it's important that it will last. And uh, when the team I mentioned earlier, uh, there's some back noise, guys. If uh, the team, uh, if the team figure out, figures out 
the solution by themselves, they will be like uh, nurture it and they'll look after it more. But sometimes it's not happening, right? And you need to be the one, uh, like from the project manager perspective or the accountable for, or even just for leading a scrum master ceremonies because uh, uh, the review state is also one thing of the ceremony, uh, of, the, of, the, of the flow of the ceremony. It's not only thing of finding out solutions, it's about making sure that they happen and then share the progress. So you need to know, you need to have an article, you need to have meetings or ways to report the progress. So if the progress is occurring, everybody is happy and they see that it's, it's important to attend the retrospective meetings. Okay, uh, but sometimes the work is really bad and it's boring and nobody would like to know them. So here's the empathy and uh, it's important to remind them that the situation when they really didn't look for similar, uh, similar change that happened in the, the history of the team. But they, you really didn't like it. Or remember you didn't, uh, you didn't uh, imagine that it will work, but it actually worked. So remind them that similar situation had a, bad, had a positive impact. So that's the thing. Uh, emphasize them that if they don't believe in a change, maybe let's try it. Let's give it a try, proof of concept or so ever. Let's just give it a try. This is the most important thing. If you tried it, you'll know that this is a good idea. And if not, if nothing is working, just be the tra traditional project manager, which is reminder, reminders and uh, meetings and, and so on. That will also give them a motivation <laughs> to do the work. Okay, the remote retrospective, the COVID-19 situation as we know it. Uh, how I'm working at the moment. So the, the, when everything is home office, it's important that people are aware with the tool that we're working with. So a good tool is, uh, is actually everything because if you're actually stuck with the tool, then the and the, the energy goes somewhere and the discussion is on the tool itself, not the problem. So it's like a, it's like a whistle where the steam goes and uh, nobody's concentrating on the items itself. So have the tool, uh, look for it earlier, get the team familiar with it earlier before the retro itself. So that's the, that's the tool, that's the tool. Okay, structure and communication. You need to know the history. You need to know uh, how, what exercises will be done up front. A lot of planning, uh, maybe some even suggestions. The situation. Uh, so, as as help the team as much as possible because if they there are so many distractions at home that if uh, that's you need to be really efficient with the with work to, to win their attention because it's not only, sometimes it's even hard to catch the attention of people at work where they're only in a room looking at the board, but at home, they've got other, uh, you know, uh, slacks or teams constantly bombarding them with information, emails, maybe production issues, and also kids or even, I don't know, the TV. So it's it's really hard. So you need to make uh, make them aware what we'll be doing, how we'll be doing, which tools, and make the work really simple. Like even preparing some cards that in a color, so they just copy paste some some things that were meant earlier, or repeat it constantly so uh, they fill in the cards before the retro a lot of like in two weeks, like on daily remind them if you've got something to say or if something is frustrating you, uh, write it down now so it won't be forgotten. Jump into the chat. Yeah, we have some questions. Yep, three, 50, three questions. Three questions. Yeah. What is the retrospective technique? Okay, now I like to make uh, changes every three meetings. 
And normally I'm doing the stop start or I like uh, dislike or frustrate me and so on. The, 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 the four swim line technique. I call change the names. So it more, it's more, it's more, uh, um, it touches more the feelings than start, stop, improve, and, and, and I don't know what was the list. Uh, but sometimes I, we draw a picture together, like that there was a, and everybody was a form of uh, Kalambore. There was a balloon and it was the, uh, what drags us and what uh, drives us. And uh, everybody was was participating together in drawing the 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 thing on one board, and it was really a lot a lot of fun. And through fun, they uh, the the participation rate was really high. And it's that's the that's the thing. You should make things funny and engaging. So this balloon technique, I really enjoyed it. What else? Uh, there's the in the retro environment and uh, remote. Uh, world, there's no many things. I like them, uh, surprise them with, with movies and so on, maybe sounds, like uh, if something comes up, that I make some sounds from the background, something like that. So this is how I tried to make it uh, different. Or we're making, uh, we're making changes like we dress up. Everybody has, do I have it here? No, somebody I've got, not from the, the previous one. See, crown, to make them, uh, to make it a, an event that is not only business, but also social. And that makes also the, the proper flow and dynamics of, of the discussion. How long is it? I, uh, in working environment, I had one and a half hour. In retrospective, I never crossed the, in uh, in home office and online, I never crossed the one hour uh, line. If we don't manage to uh, to tackle all the problems, uh, we need to catch up. But it's I see that one hour discussion is 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 plenty enough. What's the main in uh, what is the main interrupt? Uh, I, I didn't know, I don't know this word, maybe it's a mistake. Impediment? No, impediment or or no. Yes, it's, it's a difficulty. Ah. It's like <laughs> something that is making things uh, harder. Okay, thank you for clarification. For me, the biggest thing is uh, <laughs> the attitude of people. If they want, don't want to participate or they, uh, from the, from the, from the technological part, uh, from it's it's not the thing. It's uh, because we can conquer. We've got so many solutions, and we can make uh, this discussion even through phone. But uh, um, the difficulty here is uh, that nobody. In, sometimes people don't want to participate, and the uh, or don't find proper, don't treat the retro technique uh, ceremony with with proper respect. No, oh, let's call it like that. Because they do three things at the time and they don't pay attention when we were explaining the holistic view and you think you've got everything, everyone aligned but uh, it's not true because they weren't paying attention. And then that, in that situation, everybody else is, is, is frustrated because they were paying attention and you need to repeat the, the sentence, the, 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 the story for that person individually. So that's really annoying. Um, guys, this more or less I answer all the three questions. Ah, upfront work. Okay, upfront work. So this is the setting up the uh, setting the boards and uh, tidying them up. You making proper labels because if it's not nice and tidy and it's if it's not self-explanatory, we all know that we like things uh, 
tidy and self-explanatory. So if it's not, people will ask questions. If you ask questions, you will waste time and people draft, uh, other people draft uh, away. Um, and what you don't need is everybody, you, you, what you don't like and you don't need and you would like to avoid is people losing attention. So that's why make sure that the things you will be presenting and uh, and the tools you will be available and understandable for everybody. And it takes time. Because even the review thing, which is quite simple, right? You would say, it's just saying the progress, but not necessarily if you don't have the description of the tasks ready and the problem described in a proper way, that will lead to questions, what was it about? And that's a time killer because people remember it in a different way and it's like you, the, the, the same story uh, repeats all over. So make sure that you did it right the first time. If you see it's not, catch up between the ceremonies to make the, uh, make the uh, descriptions better. It will really save your time and it will make your work easier. Okay, remote retrospectives. We're almost there. Don't worry. Scaled retrospectives. If you were making, have you been making retrospectives for groups larger than 15? Okay, sometimes it's happened. Sometimes it's, it's very helpful. And like we in our project, in our project, we had a chance Okay, before I'll, I'll go with this question before going to scale the retrospective. Some good ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, if they were good, who's, who is deciding who's, whose judgment is that it was a good idea? This is the whole point. If it's dying, it's not a good idea. I would be the devil's advocate over here. Yes, it's happening that something that you may think was, uh, was a good solution died. If it died, it means it wasn't assigned to somebody. If I don't, after the retrospective, if something just got, got lost, I, this is the, the tiding thing between ceremonies. I catch it up. Luckily in the tools or whatever that was uh, in, in real life with post-its, I know which post-its were for whom and I can reach what the person had in mind. And I will bring it up once more. But generally, if it's a good idea, it's, uh, in the prioritization phase, we know that if it's good, it will be there and it will stay. Um, can you tell more, uh, Alexander, can you tell more about this, this, this good idea? Was it really good or we just thought it's good? Hello, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. please. Uh, sometimes it happens that during the retro, teams is so excited and all teams just decided that this thing will, will be good or like great and because this like there was like maybe good uh, uh, facilitation of this activity or there was a, like a great uh, I don't know the speaker or the lead but after people like go to the, the departments or the some small teams and this activity like disappears and vanishes and everybody comes back to their routine and some good ideas, they just stops. Okay. Without, because maybe they're not priority for the business, as an example. So one thing, is it, is it the case that a good idea was implemented and in somehow uh, it wasn't maintained and it died? Is it in this form? Uh, it wasn't like yes it wasn't it wasn't like necessary business there wasn't like a great business value it maybe was about like the 
maybe culture or team building. Culture, exactly. Something like that. Mm -hmm. This is further steps are like just hard to tackle. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is also one trap. Uh, I I thought I mentioned it earlier, but uh, thanks for bringing that up. I'll emphasize this one more time. It's not about just making a solution one time. It's about implementing it and making it a habit. In my when I'm using uh, when I'm using Trello, there is one additional section that starts something new, and there is a let's make it in a habit, and it stays there if we need to make a change in the behavior. It stays there for six uh, six iterations, and each time we are verifying is it happening or not to make it a habit. And if it's for such a long time, there is a chance that it will be be there and this is actually the role of the um, either the scrum master if it's regarding the process or maybe the person accountable for delivery of this solution to make sure that it sticks you can agree that in the definition of done uh, when we accept that this is uh, this process is completed you can agree that this needs to stay for at least such a long time. Changing the culture is, is, is very hard and it requires a lot of attention. So if it's not only one person looking after it, but even two, the person who did it and the scrum master, I would recommend it doing actually that. You need to take care while making the, uh, the, uh, while making the, the task, how it will stick with, with us for a while. How will it change? How will we verify that it's happening constantly? Yeah, but this is very, very. Actually, it's happening with every initiative, not only in Scrum Firm, but whatever it is that we've got. Uh, on on uh, in spring, we've got uh, the whole company is willing to improve. There's a lot of initiatives, and everybody is implementing them. But uh, when uh, after after uh, autumn. It's everybody forgot them and the enthusiasm is low and nothing changed because it's hard to change the culture of and people don't like changes. So that's another thing. Okay, maybe let's, what time is it? Maybe let's yeah. try, I'll go with the <laughs> time almost left. <laughs> okay, so because the scaled retrospective is, is, is seldom, I don't know if you need to, but I would really appreciate more questions from you because uh, Maybe let's take two questions and let's call it done. I don't want to. I know it's it's different times over there. It's it's enough of of uh, of, of work. So let's take two questions and uh, let's call it done. Or not? Um, now we don't have any more questions in the chat. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> because I have only oh, there's a question. Oh, you, books, books, recommended. Okay, I've sent the Agile uh, retrospectives, um, the authors, uh, I believe, Anna, to you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and this is, it's simple and it's, uh, it's really enough because it's not the idea of reading thousands of pages. It's about uh, asking proper questions. <laughs> Actually, it's about being consistent. <laughs> if you implement everything that was said over here, but be consistent, everything will be fine. So, <laughs> Have you ever conducted retrospective for retrospective? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. And it's, but it's not like a very long thing. It's what I said. This is the part in the closure. It's like simple correcting feedback and getting more insight of it. Like, did you like it? That's an opening question. Mm -hmm. And what did you like? Uh, what will, what's what's important for you? So those are the facts. And if there's I didn't like that, so let's let's dig more. It's it's people. Are, everybody is tired with the retrospective itself, and the retrospective of the retrospective is like uh, it's a red flag for the bull. But uh, but uh, if you uh, hear them out mm -hmm. and get the smiley survey, do they like it or not? you can catch up with them and then, then uh, carry on because it's not good to make a follow-up on the retrospective itself 
Mm -hmm. of the of the main topic but it's the retrospective of the retrospective is just for me so it's it's a one-to-one -one discussion so uh, i would say it's uh it's not bad because you don't need everybody's agreement here it's i'm the facilitator and i actually am the the body that's doing it so that's uh, i find it acceptable okay. uh one more question from alexander Mm -hmm. How much Better time than... do you need yes to prepare to oh, prepare? Yeah. So it's I would go with the worst case scenario when I'm an external uh, facilitator for a retro. And in this case, I would say two hours. That's that's a bare minimum because mm -hmm. you need to discuss with the main stakeholders. Is it just a retro to uh, a normal one or is it later dedicated for a such situation you need to know the team you need to uh, to cut corners you need to get uh, familiarized somehow with them uh, know the context know which tools they're using so actually it's it's you need to do the same steps like i mentioned but uh, if it's totally new for you it's it takes time but the worst thing is uh, to understand the context, especially if it's a, uh, a dedicated uh, retro perspective to fix something. So it's challenging there. Okay. Oh, and of course, if it's a scaled retrospective, mm -hmm. then everything is, uh, everything is uh, totally different. Maybe the scaled retrospective is important when you're making a retro for 80 people. And the mm -hmm. question is, how do you deal with it? Are you doing it alone or you've got people who can help you with? Because if you're doing it alone, you need to divide those 80 people to, to maximum seven to nine people groups. But if you, everything is happening in one place and you've got people helpers, just the introduction, just explanation of the situation, the group of the, the, the dynamics of the, of, the, of the team, of the, you know, of the, of the audience, and I can crash you. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, to prepare for such things. It's it it, but I would say it's worth it. Every time in preparation saves you time at the meeting itself. If you do it, if you cut corners on preparation, it will hit you in the back uh, on the event itself. So it's time well spent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lukas, for your. Uh, answering the questions, but uh, time is already up. Yes, exactly. Uh, I would like to probably invite you to our next uh, Agile Lean Coffee or maybe next meetup, and there you will uh, continue to t uh, talk about scaled retrospectives. I'll be happy to. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks yes. for having me here. Uh, if you've yeah. got any questions, um, the the email is in the presentation itself, and uh, just feel free to to contact me, and I'll be really happy to to explain um, about the things that I didn't have a chance. But as you can see, it's just scaled retrospective, and and that's uh, the only thing that uh, that skipped. But uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to our participants for their time. I really hope that it will be useful for everyone. Thank you and see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.